As I look to nature's beauty, dazzle am I, knowing everything comes on you, the Lord Most High. Brothers and sisters in Islam, many of us try to make sure that we do many good deeds so we would fulfill our salah, our prayers on a daily basis. We would read much Quran and we would engage in much remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps we would give out a lot of charities and perhaps we would do many other good deeds without realizing that Islam is not only about doing good deeds but looking after them after having engaged in them. Many people do not realize that it is very easy to do a good deed, but it is more difficult to keep that good deed intact in a way that it can be of benefit to us when we arrive in front of the Almighty on the Day of Judgment. Many people engage in good deeds. No sooner have they done the good deed, they have donated it to others because of actions of their own. To the degree that when they come on the Day of Judgment, the deed is no longer theirs, but it now belongs to someone else, given to them in the form of payment, sometimes because of a wrongdoing against that particular person. This is in fact one of the ways that we would lose or spoil the good deeds that we have engaged in. And this is why we have been reminded many times by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may peace be upon him, and may the blessings be upon all his companions, his entire household and every single one of us. He constantly reminded us to ensure that we need to know the devil's plan. The plan of the devil from the very beginning was to waste our time in existence here in this world. And the devil, shaitan, iblis, the accursed, has promised the Almighty from the very beginning that I will wait in ambush for mankind to his left and right, in front of him and behind him, in order to ensure that he is an ungrateful person who will not worship you, but he will worship everything besides you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted respite to the devil as a test for mankind. And this is why one of the most important things for us as human beings to know is how does the devil come to us? What is his plan? If we don't know the plan of the devil, we will definitely fall into his trap. If I were to tell you that there is a scam on the internet or a scam near your residence or your workplace whereby people are robbing, stealing, waylaying or harming others, it would be in the best of your interests to know how they are doing this so that you can protect yourself and your family members from being robbed or harmed in any way. So we are foolish not to know the biggest robber and scammer in existence who is the devil. And we are foolish not to know his plan and how he engages in it. Brothers and sisters, sometimes when we talk about association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, People feel that this topic is very far from us because how is a Muslim going to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without realizing that association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the single biggest contributor to the spoiling of your deeds, beloved brothers and sisters. The single biggest contributor to the waste of all your deeds or mine would be if we associated a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ascribed a partner with him, and don't think that it is something that will not come to me or to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us conscious of the fact that there are so many things that are included in the issue of association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason why it is only correct for us to start with this point is because it is a point that angers the Almighty to the degree that he has promised that if a person dies upon what is known as shirk or association of partnership with Allah, he has no chance. He will not be forgiven by the Almighty. Allah will not forgive the one 
who associates partners with him. And obviously this is speaking about a person who dies in that condition without repentance. But Allah says he may forgive whomsoever he wishes besides that in whatever way he wishes. So it is important for us to make sure that we abstain from any form of association of partnership with the Almighty for us to have some sort of hope on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us paradise through his mercy. And may the Almighty forgive our shortcomings. May he really make us not only from those who are conscious of him, but from those who are conscious of the plot of the devil at all times. Like a person moving with an expensive stone or an expensive diamond or piece of jewelry or a lot of gold. How would they look around them to ensure that no one has an evil eye intending to usurp that wealth of theirs or that valuable item of theirs? They would look to their left and to their right. Sometimes even innocent people, we will be cautious of them in order for us not to fall prey to someone usurping something wealthy or expensive that we have. And for this reason, it's important for us to know that the religion that we have and the fact that we are worshipping Allah alone, that is indeed much more valuable than anything we can put value to. May the Almighty grant us the ability to protect ourselves to the degree that every single point and every single movement of ours, we are worried, we are concerned. Is this an association of partnership with the Almighty? And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tells him, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is explaining the seriousness of association of partners with Allah. Many of us, when we think of association of partners, we think of a stone and an idol, perhaps a tree, perhaps a grave, and so on. And we think we will never do that without realizing it goes deeper than that. Inshallah, in a few moments, we will discuss one or two of the aspects that sometimes may be overtaking some of us. May the Almighty protect us. So Allah says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ if you are going to associate partners with Allah, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and obviously this was impossible because the one who brought about the message of Tawheed, the one who brought about the message of the oneness of the maker, it was impossible for him to have fallen into the same trap. But this verse is a warning, a lesson for us all to show us that no matter how, pi how pious you may think you are, and what level of spirituality you may feel you have achieved. Do not think that you are a person whom shaitan does not come to, to try and spoil your deeds. No, shaitan will come to everyone to try and take their deeds away. So Allah says, if you associated partners with me, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you would spoil all your deeds. They would basically turn over against you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness to the degree that the verse ends saying that لَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ You will be from amongst those who have lost. If you look at Khusran, the term loss, here it would be referring to someone who has done a lot of deeds, but those deeds are of no benefit. Imagine a person who has earned millions and billions and they have not benefited from it because something had happened between them and the spending of that particular wealth, sometimes even death. May the Almighty grant us goodness. And this is why we say, brothers and sisters, as much as we would like to earn a healthy living and have a comfortable, luxurious life, remember that is very temporary. Prepare for the day you are going to need the palace to live for eternity. And that palace will not be able to be bought by the real or the dollar, but it will be able to be bought by good deeds and non-association of partnership with the Almighty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Allah Almighty is so independent that he says, أَنَا أَغْنَى الشُّرَكَاءِ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ فِيهِ مَعِيَ غَيْرِ تَرَكْتُهُ وَشِرْكَ I am the most independent from the partners that are associated. When a person associates partners with Allah Almighty, he says, 
I don't need that partnership. I am totally independent. If someone has associated me, if someone has associated a partner with me in an act of worship, I withdraw and I leave the act of worship for the other partner. Allahu Akbar. That is a powerful hadith. And it is known as hadith Qudsi, which means Allah Almighty is speaking. He says, the partnership is such that I don't need the profit from here. I am completely independent. Ya ayyuhannasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. O people, indeed you are absolutely dependent on the Almighty. And the Almighty is totally independent of you, completely independent. He is worth all praise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who praise Him, not only with our words, but even with our actions. So brothers and sisters, the Almighty is telling us, if you would like to do a deed and in it, you are doing it for me and for someone else at the same time, I withdraw and I would leave it for that particular person. And this is why on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِي And on that day they will be called. Where are those whom you associated as partners with me? And the various verses make it clear that they will not be responded. And those who were associated as partners will actually disassociate themselves from the partnership that was engaged in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Sometimes when a person engages in a good deed and in his heart, he would like to show off. He would like to show someone. It is known as a riya. This type of show actually negates the good deed and results in the dropping or eradication of the reward of that particular good deed because we are showing. It happens sometimes even in prayer where a person is rushing in prayer and when another one happens to pass them, they quickly make their prayer slightly slower or the posture slightly better. That is known as association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes when a person is sick and ill, what happens is they visit the doctors. Alhamdulillah, that is important because Al-Akhdu bil Asbab, to do whatever is beneficial for you in order to achieve what you would like to achieve is very important. But to feel that it is solely the doctor who is going to cure you and to remove Allah from the equation is association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should know that we call out to the Almighty and ask the Almighty to grant the doctor the ability to do that which is correct so that we can be granted cure by the Almighty. It is a technicality which we need to understand and protect ourselves from misunderstanding. So brothers and sisters, the same applies to wealth and sustenance. If we are to achieve wealth and sustenance through the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is ingratitude, which we will get to in a few moments. But if we are to sell our faith in order to achieve that which is material, perhaps we may be associating wealth as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'isa abdul dirham, ta'isa abdul dinar, ta'isa wa takasa wa idha shika falan taqash. Amazingly, we talk of destruction for the one. The one who worships the dirham and the dinar, the one who worships gold and silver, they are definitely at great loss. And they are definitely people who are at such a loss that even if they were pricked, they would not be able to help themselves remove that particular thorn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This is why we see sometimes people may be granted lots of wealth. But they still cannot help themselves in terms of health. Sometimes no matter how much wealth you have, it does not bring about sleep. Because the Almighty is the owner of the wealth and the sleep. Sometimes the Almighty wants to make it clear to us that He is the owner of health, as well as wealth, as well as sustenance in terms of blessing. Because some people's blessings are snatched away because of their evil deeds. May the Almighty grant us goodness. Another way of association of partnership with the Almighty is when a person becomes so secularly in their thinking that they remove the Almighty from the equation. What this means, Allah describes in the Quran. Allah 
وجعل على بصره غشاوة فمن يهديه من بعد الله أفلا تذكرون Have you seen the one who has considered his own brain or mind or intellect as a God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So he worships his mind, his brain, his intellect and removes the Almighty from the equation. Allah says, such a person, Allah has sealed their eyes, their ears and their faculties and none can guide them besides the Almighty. So do you not take heed? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And what we mean here is when the Almighty has revealed a verse or when revelation has come down, when the messenger peace be upon him has clarified something in its authentic form, we need to know, yes, it is important for us to try our best to understand what the Almighty is saying and why he is saying it. But there will always be certain items we may not be able to understand exactly why they have been revealed. The mere fact that they have been revealed by the Almighty should be enough for us really to engage in it. Take a look at the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He was instructed to do things that did not make sense to the human mind, but it made sense to the believing heart. Allahu Akbar. So there is a difference between the human mind and brain and the believing heart. The heart of a believer surrenders to the Almighty, whilst the mind might have a question or two of understanding. But ultimately, whether we understand it or not, when we know the source of the instruction and we still surrender to that particular instruction, we then join the ranks of those who are the friends of the Almighty, such as Ibrahim. May Allah's peace be upon him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from his life as well. So brothers and sisters, it is important for us to protect ourselves from all types of association of partnership with the Almighty. Because no matter how much salah we read, no matter how much Quran we read, no matter how many charities we have given, if we have associated a partner with the Almighty, we then spoil our deeds. And we have seen the warnings that were issued even to the messengers to say, you dare engage in any form of association of partnership with me, Allah says. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. The next point that is important for us to realize is the issue of innovation where a person feels that they know better than the messenger may peace be upon him the messenger peace be upon him was sent to us in order to teach us how to worship Allah that was the reason why he was sent he was sent to teach us how the Almighty wants to be worshipped so if anyone comes up with an act of worship that was not taught by the messenger peace be upon him he has directly insulted the messenger and he has also directly insulted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason is, what was the point of sending a messenger to teach us how to worship Allah when we think we know better than him? May Allah protect us. And sometimes people get so upset when we tell the people not to do things which were not done by the messenger. They think perhaps you, be you belong to a sect that is deviant. May the Almighty protect us. There is no deviance in a sect that calls towards obeying the instruction of the messenger and abandoning anything in terms of acts of worship that he has not taught. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The messenger has said on many occasions, I leave with you two things. For as long as you hold fast upon them, you will never be led astray. That is the book of Allah and my traditions, my ways. May the Almighty grant us a beautiful return to the path of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, if you take a look at Surah Al-Kahf, towards the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the biggest losers, those who do lots of deeds, and they think they are doing good deeds, but at the same time, they have not followed the messenger's path and way. And this is why they have lost. Say O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, 
Should I inform you of the one who is the greatest of losers or those who are the greatest of losers of their deeds? People who have spoiled their deeds completely. They are those whose struggle was always astray. They neither followed the path of the messenger. They did deeds, acts of worship, which were not taught, not done by the messenger. May peace be upon him. And they thought that they were doing good. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. People who would like to add one rak'ah in the rak'ah of dhuhr or the afternoon prayer, they would re, it would result in the nullification of the entire prayer. Because we are only allowed the units which were done by the messenger. May peace be upon him. The same applies to all other acts of worship. Beloved brothers and sisters, never ever think that there is a single act of worship that the messenger forgot to teach us. Never ever think that there is any act of worship that you may engage in that would be better than what the messenger has come with and never ever think that the messenger has not done the deeds which were enough for us to follow so now we need to come up with a new deed and a new act of worship that would result in the spoiling of your deeds may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness this is why towards the end of the same surah Allah says فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever is looking forward to the meeting with the Almighty, they should fulfill two main conditions. Don't you want to meet the Almighty? Don't you want to meet your Maker? Don't you want to meet the one who created you? Well, if you want to meet him, Allah says, whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should make sure that they have two qualities in them. One is that they do deeds that were taught by the messenger alone. No extra deed. Don't think for a moment that you will achieve spirituality by doing a deed that was not done by the messenger. May peace be upon him. If you would like to know every deed of yours, Ask the scholars around you, was this done by the messenger? If it was not, you do not need it in your life, no matter where else it came from. May the Almighty grant us purity. You do not need it. In fact, it will be a point of your downfall and mine if we were to engage in deeds that were not done by the messenger. May peace be upon him. So if you look at the tafsir or the explanation of the term amalan salihan, it means to do deeds that were taught by the messenger alone. Those are good deeds. Salih means that which is good enough and pure enough for acceptance. And the second condition that you would require if you want to meet the Almighty, and if you are looking forward to meeting your Maker, you need to protect yourself from association of partners with Allah Almighty. May the Almighty grant us goodness. Brothers and sisters, Islam is very easy. It is us sometimes who add the salt and pepper to our religion in order to try and decorate it with innovation, not realizing innovation can never decorate your cake, but instead it will make it unpalatable, that which can never be consumed. May the Almighty protect us from innovation of every sort. Thereafter, when we oppress our fellow human beings, also our deeds are spoilt. They are messed to the degree that there is a hadith known as the hadith of the bankrupt person. Where the messenger, peace be upon him, asks, and I'm sure we've repeated this many times, Atadruna manil muflis, do you know who is the one who is a bankrupt person? And the companions respond saying he is one who does not have any gold or silver. In our terms, one with no cash. He's a cashless person. And perhaps he owes people so much. So the messenger says, no, a true bankrupt person is he who comes on the day of judgment with a lot of good deeds next to his name. A lot of good deeds. For example, he would have salah. He would have lots of salah. Perhaps he might have salah in the masjid with jama'ah in the first line. And perhaps he might not have missed his tilawa or recitation of the Quran. Perhaps he might have engaged in lots of remembrance of Allah. Perhaps he might have given out lots of charities. Perhaps he might have gone for hajj and he might have fasted in the month of Ramadan. And he might have engaged in the voluntary fast. Now, these are all signs of what we would term a pious person. Today, my beloved brothers and sisters, piety 
has become an item and an issue that people gauge by looking at the outward appearance of an individual, not realizing that the true root of piety is the heart. It begins to show outwardly, correct, but not necessarily everyone who looks outwardly pious is actually internally pious. And not everyone who looks outwardly impious would be internally in the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the rectification of both the internal as well as the external. So there would be people who have come with lots of good deeds, many good deeds. But Ya'ti, when he comes, he would have slandered this one. He would have backbitten this one. He would have usurped the wealth of this one. He would have wronged this one. He would have sworn the other. Shatam ahada. Shatam means one who abuses verbally the others. Today we abuse those who work for us. We abuse our colleagues. We abuse our children. We abuse our spouses. We abuse our parents verbally. How dare we do that when we are looking forward for the day we meet our maker? How do you think it would be when we present our swear words in front of the Almighty and say, Ya Allah, when I was in the world, you gave me one chance and here you are. Ya Allah, these are the words I used to use. A'udhu Billah. May the Almighty protect us from the devil. So the devil comes to us and he makes us harm someone, backbite someone. For your information, brothers and sisters, backbiting is so dangerous that today we are living in an age of backbiting. And people do not understand the meaning of backbiting because when you say, my brother, my sister, do not talk about this person bad because they are not here. They will tell you, but what I am saying is true. That shows the height of ignorance because the messenger, peace be upon him, has explained very clearly that when you are speaking the truth about someone else in their absence, in a way that they would not like it if they were present, that is known as backbiting. So to speak a lie is actually worse. So if you want to know what is backbiting, brothers and sisters, it is to speak the truth about someone in their absence in a way that if they were there, they would not like it. May the Almighty forgive us all. I would like to think that perhaps the bulk of us, perhaps myself included, sometimes we need to raise the awareness within ourselves of these type of words and statements. May the Almighty forgive us. And for your information, when you backbite, my brothers and sisters, immediately, your salah is given away, your zakah is given away, your good deeds given away. You might be the most pious person externally, but because you have harmed someone through backbiting alone, or spreading rumor about them, or slandering. Slandering would mean al-buhtan, to create a lie about them. You would have given away your charities. And this is why it's important for us to know that the Almighty has warned us through the lips of the Messenger, peace be upon him, regarding every single way that the devil comes to us in order to snatch our deeds away. Do not let your deeds be snatched. If you would hold a piece of gold, you would make sure you hold fast upon it. If you were to travel to a country where they told you, be careful of the handbag snatchers, perhaps you will make sure your handbag is well tucked in, in a way that it, nobody would snatch it. Why are our deeds exposed? And we are allowing everyone to snatch our deeds in a way that on the day of judgment, when we get there, this hadith continues. It says, so this man's good deeds go to the other and the, 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 the rest of the good deeds go to all those whom he has oppressed in any way until he is left with no good deeds. But, but does it stop there? The answer is no. So this pious man whom we all thought was so religious is now strapped of all or should I say stripped of all his good deeds because he has oppressed so many people and then what happens there are still a line of people who are waiting for justice because he has oppressed even more by eating their wealth by harming them by spreading rumor about them by doing whatever it is in terms of usurping their rights in the world so now the bad deeds of those who are waiting the bad deeds of the oppressed will now go on to the record of this man who owes them because of oppression. So perhaps an adultery might go into his account. Perhaps another sin may go into his account. Perhaps the missing of a prayer might go into his account until he is taken and thrown and cast into hellfire. May the Almighty safeguard us. That is by far one of the most serious a hadith or traditions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when it comes to 
the spoiling of our good deeds. Brothers and sisters, we take it for granted. Today, we spoil our good deeds with one SMS, with one email, with one phone call. We spoil our good deeds. Brother, you have your salah. Protect it. Protect it very dearly. And this is why in the Quran, Allah says, Whoever comes with a good deed shall have his good deed multiplied tenfold. The reasons some of the Mufassireen make mention of the fact that to protect a good deed is ten times more difficult than to engage in it. So if you engage in a good deed, mashallah, you deserve a good deed and you deserve the multiplication if you bring it with you on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us bring our deeds on the day of judgment and may he make us from those who can protect ourselves. Another very important issue that we need to discuss today when we speak of spoiling our deeds is the issue of ingratitude. When we show ungratefulness to the Almighty, the term used is Al-Kufr. And Kufr, as you know, also refers to disbelief. Because when you have shown ingratitude, you have actually disbelieved in the gifts of the Almighty. And this is why Allah says, Whosoever disbelieves in belief, Whoever disbelieves in faith has definitely spoiled their deeds. If you take a look at those who don't have belief, those who don't believe in the first place, Allah speaks about them. He says, We have indeed granted them their deeds in advance. So whilst they were in this world, because they were disbelievers, they might have been charitable. They might have been people who did lots of good deeds, so to speak. But because they disbelieved, we gave them their due whilst they were in the world. In a way that when they got to the life after death, these deeds were all strewn all over and they were of no benefit to them. So this is why you find sometimes the disbelievers are enjoying this world. They have good health. They have lots of wealth. Perhaps they have children who are obedient to them. Perhaps they have conditions of non-suffering. But that is all sometimes just a payment for maybe a little bit of charitable deed that they may have engaged in. May the Almighty make us from those who appreciate the fact that we have belief. And we are from amongst the Muslimin. We are from amongst the submitters. And may He make us submit. There are many verses in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the loss of deeds that were done. If you look at one of the verses revealed at the time of the messenger, peace be upon him, to raise the voice above the voice of the messenger, to create that which is disorderly, and to be disrespectful to the messenger, peace be upon him, is considered an act that will result in the loss of good deeds, the spoiling of good deeds, لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي. This was one of the verses revealed at the time, where the companions were instructed not to raise their voices above the voice of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. And later on in سورة الحجرات, Allah says, ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم. And don't speak to him in a way that you would speak to one another. And obviously from this we would learn the issue of respecting the messenger, may peace be upon him. When he has made a statement, it is not the same as my statement and yours. We take it, it is a spiritual religious instruction. And we will adopt it and we will do our best to respect the word not only by putting it above our heads, but by following it. Some people think the respect of the Quran is when you put it in a high place, but you don't need to follow its words. Allahu Akbar. Have you seen? Sometimes in our homes, the Quran has a special place, but it is there we respect it outwardly alone. We see people putting the Quran on their heads, but do they follow it? That is the question. True respect of the Quran and the Sunnah is when you follow the Quran and the Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Brothers and sisters, enough hypocrisy from myself and yourselves of looking at the words. As soon as we see a verse on the floor, we pick it up. 
Yes, that was a good deed. You picked up the verse because it was dropped on the floor, perhaps in a public place. But did you follow that word? Maybe Allah wanted you to pick the word up as an evidence against you. It told you how to dress. It told you how to fulfill your salah. It told you what type of wealth to eat. It told you what to abstain from. It told you to abstain from adultery. We lifted the word. We put it up in a proper niche in the right place. But we never ever adopted it. Is that respect? Is this what we want? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who spoil our deeds. So this is why we say the Almighty has stated whoever raises their voice above the voice of the messenger. Perhaps their deeds may be spoilt without them realizing. Brothers and sisters, today we speak, mashallah. What this would mean is we should never allow the statement of one of us to be granted more value than the statement of the messenger. May peace be upon him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us. And at the same time, he has given us good news to say, it is never too late. You are breathing. You can change your life. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And repent, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O believers, in order for you to achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اقرأ كتاب الله ترق جناب